let me just point out a few of the differences of the conversation that takes place. Because skeptics and critics will look and they'll go, look, the accounts of this conversation that Jesus has with his disciples following the Last Supper, they don't match up. Matthew and Mark, it says they sing a hymn and then they go out. And Jesus mentions uh, that, hey, you guys are going to scatter. And he points to a verse in Zechariah 13, 7. And he quotes that as a prophecy saying that when the shepherd is stricken, that the sheep will scatter. Luke and John don't mention any hymn. They don't mention anything about a prophecy from Zechariah. But Luke does mention, as we read, they have this debate over who is the greatest among them. Matthew, Mark, and John don't mention that. Jesus says something about, hey, you guys are going to be end up ruling in the kingdom. Uh, Satan, as we'll see in Luke, that he says, hey, Satan, Jesus says Satan has asked that uh, he be allowed to test you. But don't worry, Peter, you're going to make it through. In John, Jesus has this teaching about a new commandment that he has given, and he says that where I'm going, you can't follow. So which is it? What are the details of the conversation? Apparently they got their stories all mixed up. The evening, how long is an evening? By any chance? A few hours at the least, whatever you want to consider that. Now, any one of these sections, you could sit down and read it in about five, ten minutes. So you have the authors of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, taking about probably three or four hours worth of conversation and boiling them down into an account that you can read through in about five minutes. You think maybe they left some stuff out and just kind of picked and choose the main ideas they wanted to focus on? So if the question that someone has is, ha ha, which one was the conversation? All of them. They're just picking and choosing the bits of the conversation they want to recount to make the point they are making in their gospel. So Matthew and Mark and Luke and John each pick different aspects of the conversation, but all of these things got shared and all of these things got talked about. So because differing, slightly different accounts do not create a contradiction. A contradiction is a very specific kind of thing. It says this is true and this is false at the same time and in the same way. But here we actually have, as we've talked about before, there were the gospel authors. They were not 21st century historians trying to get everything down exact to the little nitpicky detail in exact chronological order. They had a point to make. They were recounting the life of Jesus and sometimes... They may have played a little loose with the way they worded things, or they picked some things to put in and some things to leave out. And not, while not entirely having to do with this particular section, it's also worth mentioning that just because two authors may account the same, de- the same event with different details, even though they may recount the same speech with slightly different words, it's not a contradiction. Let me ask you this. <clears throat> Patrick Henry, we all know Patrick Henry, right? Founding father in the revolution. He is known for saying, if I can't be free, I'd rather die. Is that what Patrick Henry said? No, that's not what Patrick Henry said. Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Does it mean the same thing? Yes, it does. And so if someone were to recount Patrick Henry saying that he would rather die if he couldn't live free, they're not saying anything wrong. There's not a contradiction. They're just not precise, exact with the details, but they got the substance of what was being said. Likewise, in the Bible, even if the exact detailed word-for-word progression of statements and events is not preserved There's still no contradiction because the meaning, the substance of what we need to learn from it is still there. 